What is up, Wayside Chapel? I miss you, and especially today, because it's Easter. I miss hanging out with you guys, and I would love to spend some time with you, but since we can't be together, you and me, then what I would love for you to do is just send me a picture this week of you and your family. However you're celebrating Easter, if it's you in your pajamas, if it's you doing the Easter egg hunt with your siblings, if it's you guys just eating a pizza because it's Easter 2020 and coronavirus, and if that's just what you guys are doing this week, that's fantastic. I'd love that. I would love, love, love to see your faces, and so just want to wish you a happy Easter. You know, I used to live in West Tennessee, and in West Tennessee we had these things come around a lot that we don't get a lot here in San Antonio, and they are tornadoes. <laughs> tornadoes were a big deal in West Tennessee. We'd get them a ton. And where we used to live, we lived in like rural West Tennessee, like way out in the boondocks. And so what would happen is we actually found out that we were one of the last houses on the electrical grid of the power company we were paying our power bills to. So whenever like the wind would get really bad or a thunderstorm would come on or heaven forbid a tornado would come around our power would go out and it would happen all the time especially you know when we had sophie in this particular house that we lived in we always just kind of got ready for the power to go out because it was gonna happen so we had candles and we had all this other stuff but we also discovered that like there's a lot that we would normally do in our house that we can't do without the power. And so right now in the crazy time that we're living in, like, at least we have power. <laughs> and so I'm thinking about like, what if we couldn't play video games or watch TV or cruise the internet or do any of this other stuff that maybe we're used to doing because of power, but like, oh, if the power went out and we were quarantined, that would be difficult. Having power is huge and super important. And it's what we're gonna talk about today. We're talking about Jesus' power. So today we're going to look at a time when Jesus cast out demons. And this might be a familiar story to you, and if it's not, it is a crazy one. I love it. Uh, but first got to ask this question, what is sin? As we're looking at Easter, we're talking about Jesus' triumph over sin. But in order to get there, we have to understand what sin is. The reality is, sin is a transgression of divine law. Sin is when we do something against God's law, and that's huge. It's putting our desires over and above God's desires. Uh, and we might think that we have power over sin. We might think that we have the power to choose to do the right thing, but over and over in our own lives, kind of like when my power goes out, we discover that we really don't have a whole lot of power. Now, this guy who Jesus was going to talk to and confront, it might seem like he had power. In fact, check out this story. This is Mark chapter 5. This guy who Jesus was going to go and, and, and he was interacting with, his name was Legion. And what was crazy is that people had tied him up with chains and with ropes, and they had sent him out of the city. But every time they tr tried to tie him down, he broke out of his chains. Every time they put ropes around his hands, he got out of them. He had powerful demons. And when he saw Jesus, those demons inside of him recognized who Jesus was. Mark 5, 6 through 8 says, When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and knelt down before him. And he cried out with a loud voice, What do you have to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you before God, don't torment me. For he had told him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Now this is crazy. Legion can mean anywhere from a thousand to three thousand people. Legion was often a, a military term to, to describe how many soldiers were in this large group of an army. And so legion was a thing that would, we could definitely see that Jesus is outnumbered here. And he says, come out of the man. It's one guy versus thousands of demons. And this is how Jesus talks about it. It says, what is your name? And he asked him, my name is legion, he answered, because we are many. 
And he kept begging him not to send him out of the region. Now, a large herd of pigs was there, feeding on the hillside. What this lets us know about is that Jesus is not close to Israel. Because remember, God had given the nation of Israel very strict eating guidelines, and a pig was not on the menu. Jesus was far from Israel, in a place where people herded pigs, and they ate pigs. Now, it's crazy what Jesus does with this demon, this legion of demons. Mark 5, 12 through 13. The demons begged him, send us to the pigs so that we may enter them. And he gave them permission. Come back in a second. Then the unclean spirits came out and entered the pigs, and the herd of about 2,000 rushed down to the steep bank and into the sea and drowned there. This is crazy, and I love this. Jesus clearly outnumbered against legions of demons, and they still have to ask permission to leave the man and go into this herd of pigs that are feeding. And it, it, just imagine this scene with me. 2,000 pigs rushing down this steep bank and running into the sea and drowning in it. First off, that's a massive waste of bacon, and I want to mourn that. Second, can you imagine being the farmers who are in charge of these pigs that maybe you're just sitting there normally taking care of your, your pigs like normal, and then all of a sudden they just bolt and they rush into the sea and they drown? This is a huge financial hit for these people. This is a big deal. And yet, don't lose sight. This demon, who was thousands of demons, had to ask Jesus, one man, permission. It's because they knew they weren't talking to just one man, but to the God man. Check this out. Uh, the men who tended them hmm, ran off and reported in the town and the countryside. And the people went to see what had happened. They came to Jesus and they saw the man who had been demon possessed by the legion sitting there, dressed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Seeing this man, who was demon-possessed, who they had tried to tie up with ropes, who they had tried to tie up with chains, who they had tried to put clothes on to cover his body, all of a sudden, he's just sitting there. Normal. He's dressed. He's not going crazy. But instead, he just looks completely normal. They thought they had power over him. They had tried to assert power over him. And then, by extension, power over these demons. And they knew how strong this guy was. They knew what this man was capable of. And so then they looked to Jesus. And by extension, they knew what Jesus was capable of. And their reaction was to be afraid. Now, what Jesus did was he showed us that he has power over demons. But beyond that, this passage reminds us that Jesus has power over over sin. And that's what we're celebrating today. That's what we're thankful for today, that Jesus overcame death, overcame sin, and showed us that he has power over it. So real quick, you might be thinking about something that you're struggling with now, a sin that you have, something that maybe you just feel like you can't get rid of. Hey, middle school student, no matter what it is, I promise you, Jesus is stronger. Jesus is stronger than thousands of demons. I promise Jesus is stronger than the sin that you have right now. If you need to just take a moment and pray and ask Jesus to defeat the sin that you have in you, that you might feel like is tying you down, has chained you down, that weighed you down, now is your moment. Now is the time. Pray and ask that Jesus would conquer the sin in your life, the one you tried to have power over but can't. It's a good news about this, is that we are saved when we put our faith and our trust in Jesus. And Jesus has power over demons, and Jesus has power over sin, but not just everybody's sin. He has power over your sin specifically, over my sin specifically. And if we trust in Jesus, he will use that same power that he used to cast out demons to cast out the sin of our own lives. And we are thankful for that. Remember, Jesus has power over sin.
And that's what I want us to remember today. Hey, middle school students, I miss you. I hope I'll see you Wednesday for Echo Student Ministries Online and then Friday for our Zoom lunch. Y'all are amazing. I can't wait till we can hang out again. Send me an Easter picture. I would love to see you and your families. Hey, my name's Ronald. We'll see you guys later. Bye.